The Battle of Noam IV was part of the New Guinea campaign of World War II. It took place on the island of Noam IV, in Dutch New Guinea, between 2 July and 31 August 1944. During the battle, Allied forces landed on the island to capture Japanese bases as part of their advance through the Pacific towards the Philippines. The initial landing was largely unopposed and the Japanese defenders withdrew inland as the U.S. troops came ashore. Sporadic fighting took place over the course of two months as the Allies secured the three airfields on the island and pushed the surviving Japanese troops to the southeastern coast. The island was later used by the Allies to support operations around San Sapa and on Moratai. Chapter 1 Background Chapter 1 Section 1 Geography and Strategic Situation Known for is an elliptical, almost circular shape. It is approximately 11 miles in diameter and encircled by coral reefs. The landscape is dominated by limestone and coral terraces, topped by a 670 feet tall hill, which is covered by tropical rainforest, like much of the interior. One of the Shuton Islands, known for lies at the western end of the Japan Strait, to the north of Senderawasi Bay, between the island of Biak and the east coast of the Dobarai Peninsula, on mainland New Guinea. The island was occupied by Japanese forces in December 1943. The indigenous civilian population numbered about 5,000 people, most of whom lived a subsistence lifestyle in coastal villages. There were also 1,100 laborers on the island, a 600-strong Formosan auxiliary labor unit and 500 Indonesian civilian forced laborers. According to the official U.S. Army history, over 3,000 Indonesian men, women, and children were shipped to Nome 4 by the Japanese military. Most came from Surabaja, and other large cities on Java. These Javanese civilians were forced to construct roads and airfields, mostly by hand. Little food, clothing, shelter or medical attention were provided. Many attempted to steal Japanese supplies, and were executed. Others died from starvation and preventable disease. Survivors also alleged that sick Javanese were buried alive. The Formosan labor troops had originally numbered about 900 men. They had also worked on airfield and road construction, on half the ration of rice issued to regular Japanese troops. When they became ill from exhaustion, hunger, or tropical diseases, they were put in a convalescent camp. In the words of the U.S. official history, there, their rations were again cut in half and the shelter and blankets provided covered but a fraction of the inmates. Medical care was given only to the worst cases, and then was inadequate. Throughout 1943 to 1944, the Japanese built three airfields on the island, turning it into a significant air base. The three fields were, Kornasoran Airfield slash Yebro Airfield, located toward the northern end of the island, Kameri Airfield, on the northwestern edge of the island, and Namba Airfield, on the west coast of the island. Of these, Kornasoran was unfinished at the time of the battle. Nome 4 was also used as a staging area for Japanese troops moving to reinforce Biak, which was invaded by the Allies in May 1944 as part of their westward advance along the northern New Guinea coast. Japanese barges could travel from Manakwari to Nome 4, about 60 nautical miles, during one night. Chapter 1 Section 2 Allied Plans By 20 June, Japanese forces on Biak had been largely defeated and construction work began on the Mokuma airfield, which was operational two days later. Bombing of the Noam 4 by the United States Army Air Forces and Royal Australian Air Force began as early as April 1944. Between 20 June and 1 July, Allied bombers dropped 800 tons of bombs on the island. Dot in describing his preparations for the Western New Guinea campaign, General Douglas MacArthur wrote in his memoirs that, the Hollandia invasion initiated a marked change in the tempo of my advance westward. Subsequent assaults against Waked, Biak, Noam 4, and Sansepa were mounted in quick succession, and, in contrast to previous campaigns, 
I planned no attempt to complete all phases of one operation before moving on to the next objective. At the time of the battle, the area's strategic importance lay at its proximity along planned allied avenues of advance through the southwest Pacific and western New Guinea toward the Philippines. Specifically, Known 4 was selected for invasion for four reasons. Allied commanders believed that Japanese troops equivalent to less than one battalion would be based there. The Allies were already experiencing a shortage of amphibious vessels and Known 4 could be seized without large-scale operations. It also had the greatest number of useful airfields in the smallest area and Japanese air defenses in western New Guinea were almost negligible. At the end of June, RAF HQ reported that although the Namba and Kamiri airfields were serviceable, they were barely being used, and a possibly generous estimate suggested that only 19 Japanese bombers and 37 fighters remained in New Guinea. Chapter 2 Opposing Forces MacArthur selected the 158th Regimental Combat Team to assault the island in Operation Cyclone commencing on 2 July. This formation consisted primarily of units from the Arizona National Guard, United States Army, and was commanded by Major General Edwin D. Patrick. The 158th formed part of General Walter Kruger's 6th Army. At the time of their assignment to the operation, the 158th was engaged in fighting around Waked. To free them up for the assault, in mid-June, Kruger decided to replace 158th at Waked with the U.S. 6th Infantry Division. In mid-June, No. 10 Operational Group RAF, under Air Commodore Frederick Scherger, was designated the controlling Allied Air Force unit for Operation Cyclone. The ASAF units attached to 10 OG for the invasion comprised, the 58th and 348th fighter groups and the 307th, 309th and 417th bombardment groups. Total personnel assigned to the task force numbered 10,000, including those from air units, the majority of these personnel, some 5,500, were service troops. Around 3,000 of these were assigned to undertake airfield construction tasks following the capture of the island. The ground invasion force, composed primarily of the 158th RCT, was primarily American, and was known as Cyclone Task Force. It was augmented by the Australian No. 62 Wing RAF, which was tasked with airfield improvement works, and a 39-strong contingent of Dutch civil administration personnel, that was included to re-establish Dutch civil administration. This force was later reinforced by 10 local police officers after the landing. Facing them were approximately 2,000 Japanese troops, mostly from the 219th Infantry Regiment as well as some from the 222nd Infantry Regiment, who had been in transit to Biak. The garrison was commanded by Colonel Suzada Shimizu, who was also the commander of the 219th Infantry Regiment. Shimizu had arrived on the island on 8 June and had organized his defending troops into 14 strongpoints, ultimately these were too widely dispersed to enable a coherent defense. Other units assigned to the Japanese garrison included the 8th Independent Battalion, several airfield construction units, a motor transport company, an anti-aircraft unit and elements of an airfield company and airfield battalion. Throughout 1944, Various kinds of Japanese aircraft were at the Nome 4 airfields. Elements of 61 degrees Hiko Sentai, flying Mitsubishi Ki-21 bombers, were based at Kamiri. However, Japanese aircraft played no significant role in the ensuing battle as the 23rd Air Flotilla was redeployed to resist U.S. forces around Saipan on 13 June. Chapter 3 – Invasion the landing force mounted at Finchhafen and Tome, in late June, and sailed to the objective in three groups after orders had been drawn up and rehearsals had been undertaken. From 4.30 on 2 July, warships from the U.S. Australian Task Forces 74 and 75, under Rear Admiral Russell S. Berkey, bombarded Japanese positions on Nome 4. TF-74 was commanded for the first time by Commodore John Collins, making him the first graduate of the Royal Australian Naval College to command a naval squadron in action. In response to the bombardment, 
Japanese anti-aircraft guns briefly fired upon spotting aircraft until being knocked out by naval gunfire from Allied ships. At 8 o'clock on 2 July, the 158th RCT was taken to the beach by TF-77, made up of LCMs and LCTs under Rear Admiral William Fkteler. The initial landings were near Kamiri Airfield, on the northwest edge of the island. The island was surrounded by an almost solid ring of coral, but this did not hinder the landing and American newspapers later reported almost no loss of troops before reaching the shore. Shimzu's force had largely retired inland before the U.S. landing. The initial landing was carried by two battalions, which land abreast of each other, securing a beachhead about half a mile wide, supported by LVTs crewed by personnel from the 3rd Engineer Special Brigade. There had been extensive Japanese defensive preparations in the Kamiri area including wire entanglements, trenches, dugouts and prepared positions covering the Allied avenues of advance, but there was little resistance at Kamiri airfield, and the area was quickly secured as the assaulting infantry cleared the area. About 300 improvised land mines had been placed by the Japanese around the beach, but these were clearly marked and were dealt with quickly. A group of about 40 Japanese were killed around some of the caves in the area, but the majority of Japanese troops had withdrawn inland, as part of Shimzu's plan to move east towards Bro Bay to wait for evacuation, as a consequence the only opposition to the landing was an hour-long artillery bombardment from an inland battery, which fell on the landing beach and reef. One Allied soldier was killed in the bombardment, and two vehicles were destroyed before the battery was suppressed by naval guns. In the words of the U.S. Navy official history, Japanese encountered around the airfield were so stunned from the effects of the bombardment that all the fight was taken out of them. Kamiri was captured within hours of the landing. Reports indicated that approximately 45 Japanese soldiers were killed, and about 30 Japanese planes captured, although all of these were damaged as a result of the earlier bombardment and bombing. By 1750 hours on the first day, 7,100 troops had been landed, along with 500 vehicles and 2,250 tons of supplies, which had been unloaded from the eight assigned LSD S. The following day, the 3rd of July, as a precaution against Japanese resistance elsewhere, the 2,000 paratroopers of the U.S. 503rd Parachute Infantry Regiment began dropping onto the island. The regiment's 1st Battalion arrived first, suffering 72 non-battle casualties as several sticks were dropped from low altitude, resulting in a large number of leg fractures. The 3rd Battalion followed the next day, incurring another 56 non-battle casualties in the drop. As a result of the large numbers of injuries, the 2nd Battalion was brought ashore in LCIs instead of being dropped by air. The 2nd base captured by U.S. forces, Yebro Airstrip, was secured by the 4th of July and the Allied beachhead was expanded towards Kamiri. That same day, the first elements of No. 10 Operational Group arrived on Nome 4. There were no Japanese air attacks until the night of the 4th of July, when a light bomber dropped three bombs near Kamiri, without effect. A few days later, four single-engine fighters dropped about 40 incendiary bombs, causing some damage to Allied materiel. Early on 5 July, there was an unsuccessful counterattack by Japanese ground forces at Kamiri, around Hill 201, although it was defeated by 0630 hours. Around 200 Japanese were killed during the assault, which was carried out by two companies from the 219th Infantry Regiment and around 150 Formosan laborers. For the remainder of the day, U.S. forces carried out mopping-up operations and sent out patrols towards the northeast. The following day, a detachment of U.S. forces from Nome 4 also secured the smaller neighboring island of Monim. The 2nd Battalion, 158th Infantry Regiment embarked upon 20 LCTs and sailed down the western coast to capture Namba Airfield which came under Allied control, without resistance, on 6 July. The island was officially declared secure on 7 July. However, individual Japanese soldiers continued guerrilla activities, albeit largely limited to nighttime raids. While this was taking place, the Dutch detachment were able to establish contact with local chiefs who assisted in mopping up operations against the Japanese from late July. Following this, 
as the Japanese withdraw further inland. Despite Shinzu's plans to withdraw to Bro Bay to await for evacuation, the majority of his troops melted into the hills and the evacuation never eventuated. Small groups attempted to resist and Shimzu's small force was slowly pushed towards the southeastern part of the island. Troops from the 503rd Parachute Infantry dispatched many patrols to pursue the withdrawing Japanese. Initially, a force of about 400 to 500 Japanese troops under Shimzu broke contact and gathered at Hill 670, several miles to the northeast of the airfield. The 1st Battalion, 503rd Parachute Infantry Regiment re-established contact on 13 July and over the course of three days pushed towards the crest of the hill, which was found abandoned on 16 July. After withdrawing from Hill 670, Shimzu's force then managed to evade the U.S. patrols until 23 July. About four miles northwest of Inasi, troops from the 2nd Battalion, 503rd Parachute Infantry Regiment clashed with the Japanese near the lagoon. For his actions during this engagement, Sergeant Ray E. Eubanks was later posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. Contact between the two forces was lost from 25 July until 10 August, when a week-long action took place around Hill 380. Despite U.S. artillery and airstrikes, the Japanese commander managed to slip through the U.S. cordon with a small force and withdrew towards Parkriki, on the coast. Sporadic fighting continued throughout the rest of the month, but by the 31st of August all fighting had ceased. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Casualties By the 31st of August, Cyclone Task Force had lost 66 killed or missing and 343 wounded. It had killed approximately 1,730 Japanese and taken 186 prisoners. According to the U.S. Army official history, only 403 of the original 3,000 Javanese civilian laborers were alive by 31 August. About 10 to 15 were reported to have been killed accidentally by Allied forces. The rest had died from mistreatment before the invasion. About 300 Formosan labor troops had died before the invasion. Others fought the Allies, allegedly as a result of Japanese coercion. Over 550 surrendered, more than half of these were suffering from starvation and tropical diseases. Less than 20 were reported killed by Allied action. According to the U.S. Army historian, Robert Ross Smith, Allied personnel found evidence that human bodies, of Japanese, Formosan and Allied personnel, had been partly eaten by starving Japanese and Formosans. Chapter 4 Section 2 Base Development Allied airfield repair and construction work by the RAF and U.S. Army engineers began on 2 July. On the afternoon of 6 July, before the formal cessation of hostilities on the ground, and RAF P-40 fighter squadron, had landed at Kamiri, supporting operations on Nome 4 and becoming the first of many Allied Air Force units to be based there. Number airfield was assessed as too rough and badly graded to be effectively used by Allied aircraft. It was abandoned in favor of expansion and improvements at Kornasoran. On 25 July, our SAF P-38 Lighting Fighter Group was able to land there. By the 2nd of September, two parallel 7,000 feet runways had been completed, soon afterwards, B-24 Liberator heavy bombers began operating from Kornasoran airfield, against Japanese petroleum facilities at Balikpapan, Borneo. Allied aircraft based on Nome 4 played an important role in the battles of Sansepa and Moratai. <laughs>